Have you ever asked yourself, where does sin come from? And why is sin a big problem in the earth today? And how does sin contrast with being a Christian and living a life that is righteous? And for that matter, how do we even get a life that's righteous? And we're going to be talking about those very things in the lesson today out of the book of Romans. And we'll be seeing those issues when we come right back. Welcome to Bible Study with Friends, where our goal is to help you get more impact from your Bible study. I'm here with my friend Jake Curtis, and Jake and I are going to continue our study in the book of Romans. Today we're going to be talking specifically about this idea of sin versus the free gift, and where did sin come from, and why is sin such a problem today? Verse 11, the end of last week's, the verse says, and not only this, but we also exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. And we talked in past weeks about the word exult and also about this word reconciling the books and that we have that reconciliation of our sin debt through Jesus Christ. Now, verse 12 starts out with this uh, funny little phrase. It says, therefore, now anytime you find therefore, you look and see what it's there for. <laughs> and in light of what we just got done reading earlier in this chapter, and really in through this first four chapters of the book of Romans, you said, therefore, just as through one man, sin entered into the world. What do you get with the term just as? I'm going to use your note there, and it says in manner. Okay. So uh, there's a connection. It, the verse 11 says, we have this victory through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom, right? Through him, we have now received reconciliation. And he says, and therefore... Just like that, through one man, we have reconciliation and salvation. Through one man, sin entered into the world and death through sin. Now, there's a famous verse in Romans we're going to get to in the next chapter. Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. So this is starting a theme that's going to continue into chapter 6. We'll see more of that next week. But this idea of through one man's sin entered the world and death through sin. So one man introduced the reality of death. And he says, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Now, this is starting to get to the idea of where did sin come from? Did God create sin? And the answer is no, he didn't create sin. What he created was free will to not do what he asked. And so through Adam, he chose to sin. And through that choice, sin entered into the world because up to that point there was no sin in the world it was a perfect world it was the garden of eden and yet through his choice to not obey god but instead to disobey god he introduced sin into the world that our friend adam who fell and as a result all men fell because his choice revealed the sin nature in all men that left to our own devices, we will choose to sin. So does that make sense of that verse? Through yeah, one, that man, makes sense. one man's sin entered the world and through sin, death entered the world. And it spread to everybody because everybody is a sinner. 
Yeah. You know, first John chapter one, I think it's verse eight says, if you say you're not a sinner, you're a liar because everybody sins. Yeah. So everybody, that's that debt we owed earlier where we talked about, you know, our books are not matched up because we owe $12 million and we got 12 bucks. What we owe is the debt of sin and the debt of death because of that sin through mm -hmm. a choice of one man, Adam. And it says, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Now, <laughs> what question different. would we ask about that verse? What does imputed mean? That's exactly right. Did you look it up in a dictionary? I actually, in ESV, it says counted. So okay. it doesn't even use the word imputed. All right. I want to show you a tool I looked up online using Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Here's the word imputed. And it means to, to lay the responsibility or the blame. Often that's unjustly, but it can also be justly. In fact, the second definition is to create or ascribe to a person or a cause. This definition is this idea of laying responsibility. So we went and looked at the word imputed, and it says, until the law... Sin was not imputed. Now, how would that work? What well, imputed means to assign blame. And it's the idea until the law, sin was in the world, but it was not imputed. And basically what that means is that until Moses, it wasn't written down that the punishment for sin was death. As soon as the law came, it was, what the fancy word would be, it was codified. It was written down that there was a, a result of sin. Now, sin existed. The law didn't create sin. But the law codified the idea that the punishment for sin was death. Hmm. Now, we go back to our verses. In verse 14, it says, nevertheless, death reigned. He says it was codified with the law, but there was still death, and death reigned because of the what's known as the fall of man, the sin of mankind. Mm -hmm. When Adam fell, sin reigned on the earth until the law, and then it was codified. And he says, even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the offense of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come, all right? That's this idea of he was the type of man being judged for sin. Now, it, basically what it's saying there is that every man didn't sin in exactly the same way Adam did, but they sinned. Yeah. They deviated from God's will and disobeyed what God told him to do. And with the law, God codified or he formalized what he wanted man to do. And man continued to disobey and continued to sin. So hmm. law kind of clarifies what sinning is. But sin has always been around. And it says here, as a result, but, okay? Now, the word but means... Whatever is going to come right now is in contrast to what just went. So he's been talking about sin and death. And he says, but the free gift is not like the transgression. Now, in what we know that the free gift here is grace. How is grace not like sin? In uh, God, it, it comes from God yes. purposefully. And sin doesn't. Sin comes from a man, and grace doesn't come from a man. It comes from God. How else is it different? Think about this. Think about, all right, Adam sinned, and it was imputed to mankind as your sinners. Yeah. Because you're following with Adam. Now, the free gift is not universal like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 
a free gift is an individual choice that people have to respond to the free gift and accept the free gift one at a time. Nobody can accept the free gift for you. Now, Adam sinned, and it was universally imputed to mankind because of our sin nature. The free gift of God is given to everybody. But having that gift count for us, having that gift imputed to us, is individual. It's not like the sin. He says the free gift is not like the transgression. For mm -hmm. if by the transgression of the one, the many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one, Jesus, abounds to the many, but it's got to be accepted. And he goes on. This gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For on the one hand, the judgment arose from one transgression resulting in condemnation. But on the other hand, the free gift arose from many transgressions resulting in justification for the one. Mm -hmm. So you see the difference? He's contrasting sin with the gift. Yeah. Sin yeah. is universal. The gift is offered universally, but it's got to be received individually. Yeah, that's good. So there's a contrast. And he says, because if by the transgression of the one, Adam, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, that will reign in the life through the one Jesus Christ. So both of them come from a single source. Sin comes from Adam and is imputed to everybody. Grace comes from one, Jesus Christ, and, and is offered but must be received individually and that's the contrast so this idea and this clarifies by the way what is the gift we know from other places ephesians 2 8 and 9 for example for by grace you have been saved through faith not a result of works lest any man should boast but it is a gift of god so we know from places like that that the gift is salvation the gift is grace but here he's making it very clear this is a gift of righteousness, a gift of being made right, comes through Jesus. So mm -hmm. through Adam, man was made where he Unrighteous, lived. Sinful. He lived, yeah, he lived under the curse of death. But through Jesus, that one, all have the accessibility of having the righteous life given to us as a gift you see his argument here he's yeah. basically he's been talking about the law and sin and the punishment for the law and now he's making it clear that that didn't come from god that sin didn't come from god sin came from man the gift comes from god but both are through a single individual adam the fall jesus the reconciliation or the gift. In fact, we're going to see an accounting word again in just a minute. He says, so then, as through one transgression, there resulted condemnation to all men, even so through one act of righteousness, there resulted justification of life to all men. There's that accounting term, justification, right? Yeah. The books were balanced through one man. So what was the act of righteousness? Of Jesus on the cross and yeah. in his the, the act of righteousness was a sinless, righteous man died as a payment for the debt of the guiltiness of all mankind and the sin of all mankind. So through that one man, that one righteous act of the cross, to offer himself as a sacrifice to pay the debt of mankind through that gift. Life comes to all men. Now it's available to all. And it says in verse 19, as through the one man's disobedience, 
the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The obedience of the one was, you remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus knew he was going to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. And he said, I really would prefer not to suffer that. But not my will, yours be done. So through his obedience, the gift of righteous life was made available to all men. In the mm -hmm. same way that through Adam, sin was introduced into the life of all men. Through Jesus dying on the cross as a righteous act, righteousness was made available to all men. Read verse 20 and 21 together, and we'll take a look at these, kind of this culmination of this idea. All right. The law came in so that the transgression would increase, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the gift is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But there it says that the law came in so that the transgression would increase. Now, that doesn't mean that the, the, the law sinned. But remember, we've talked about what the law was for. To show us that we're sinners. And so the law was very complicated and very detail to the point where you went man no one can keep all these rules yeah. and god would say that's the idea i created the law so that your concept of sin would increase to the point where you get this idea of sin that the law clarified the fact that sinning is easy salvation had to be received as a free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. So that through Jesus Christ goes all the way back to verse 11. We get reconciliation through Jesus. We get sin through Adam, but the gift is made available through Christ. And through Christ, we have this reconciliation and eternal life. So do you see the contrast that Paul is writing and the clarification he's making? Yeah, I, yeah. Sin was not God's idea. No. Obedience was God's idea. Sin was man's idea saying, I don't want to do that. And as a result. Now, one last thing about the sin, and this is just an interesting thing. God holds Adam responsible for the sin, but it was actually Eve who was deceived by Satan into right. eating the apple. He comes, he gives her a big lie. She takes the apple and eats it. Now, at this point, Adam had not sinned. She takes the apple and she says, here, this was really good. And he decides without any coercion on Satan's part, Satan doesn't deceive him. He doesn't fool him. It's nothing. Eve just says, here. And Adam decides to go with Eve rather than go with God. And God, when he hands out the judgment, he says to Eve, you were deceived. But to Adam, he says, you chose. And so the one he holds responsible is Adam because of his free choice just to disobey. Yeah, it is interesting. When they talk about Adam all the time, I always wonder why that is, and that explains it. Yeah, very it really does. Yeah. That he, Adam had an option at this time, and I won't get too far off this rabbit trail, but there was an option. If the moment that Eve sinned by taking the apple, she was deceived. If she would have turned to Adam and said, here, this is good, if Adam would have turned to God and said, hey, Lord, this woman has sinned, I, I, and I don't want to follow her. I want a new one. That really could have been an option. Yeah. But instead, he freely chose her over God mm -hmm. and sinned. And that introduced sin into the world and introduced the fall that made the need for the righteous gift through Jesus Christ to obey by going to the cross for us 
to give us the gift of eternal life. So this contrast between sin and the gift of eternal life is an important one for us to get, and get that concept. And that's what Paul is doing here in the rest of chapter 5 for us, okay? Remember, the first 11 chapters of Romans are all about doctrine. And that's all Paul is doing here, is explaining doctrine. And we saw today the doctrine of the fall as compared to the doctrine of grace, the free gift. This is the lawyer Paul really clarifying, clarifying this, the difference between law and grace, the difference between sin and a free gift. He is really intellectually arguing the case for the Christians in, in Rome to clarify for them the doctrine. Paul did a good job explaining that, so it was quick and easy. Today we've been talking about this idea of sin and the gift of grace, the gift of salvation. We've asked ourselves the question, do I choose life or death? And it's a clear choice. I'd like to recommend a video to you. The title is Victory Over Death Through Jesus. It's out of the book of 1 Corinthians. And listen, we're going to continue our study in Romans next week. And until then, God bless you.